Now, in order to do this, there was no nothing, no registration. They don't even have to put an anonymous username. All they do is plug in their Bitcoin wallet and they start doing work and Bitcoin starts going into their wallet. So they earned it anonymous and then they can go spend it anywhere they want anonymous. And when I saw that happen, Garrett, I go, the government can't stop this. See, they control the on and off ramp, but we don't have to use the on and off ramp. We can just exchange value. They can't control that. We, and this is what the bankers, the head of the BIS, Augustine Carson says, the central banks have to come up with a central bank digital currency because nobody will trust money if it's not from a central bank. No, we, we say what money is. We take my phone, we take this <laughs> bottle, we take my labor. We say what money is. Now we'll introduce Bitcoin. Now, okay. first of all, Bitcoin was a solution to a problem. We can dive down some of the rabbit holes, like, was it a gift? We'll, we'll get into that, but let's just fast forward past that for a minute. So it was created as a solution to a problem. So when it was introduced, in the very first block, there was a message. And the message says, the chancellor's on the brink of a second bailout. So it was created. Explain at, that. So this was during 2008 yep. when the um, banks were being bailed out. And they said, hey, the chancellor so is on the brink of a second bailout. So more, the government is basically taking more money from taxpayers' pockets to socialize losses for the bankers. This is what's happening. And we need a solution to insulate ourselves from this. Uh, if you, you know, if you go to back to Frederick Bastiat's The Law, he talks about a legal plunder, right? They create this legal system to steal from you. Um, Julian Assange, I mean, he talks about wars being a way that they just take money from taxpayers and put it in their pocket, right? And so this is what's happening. They're, they're, the banks have privatized gains and socialized losses. And so it was literally created as a solution. The very first block had that met Satoshi, whoever that is, we'll go down that rabbit hole, but it was created for that solution. So now we have the solution, but th let's think about this for a minute. So, so Bitcoin has a fixed supply there's still more supply coming to the market, but it will never exceed 21 million. So it's a fixed supply, but let's go back to money again on a planet of 8 billion people. Yeah. And that's, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Let's just, let's just park that for a minute. Let's just go back to money again. Right. Because we don't want money. We want the goods and services money buys us. Right. And so money is only a, a tool to get that. So goods and services are wealth, not money. So the way the math works is we take all the goods and services divided by all the money. That's the value. Okay, so an easy way to think of this for most people, if they're tuned in a little bit, is the gold standard. So we had gold. Gold is too slow in today's day and age. Well, 100 years ago, it was too slow. So it went into the bank and they would give me an IOU for the gold, a claim for the gold. And 20 of these IOU claims would equal one ounce paper dollars. Right. So it was twenty dollars for one ounce. All the dollars divided by all the gold. Then it got revalued in 1933 to 35, but it was still $35 for one ounce. It was all the dollars divided by all the gold. So that's how it worked. Now think about this way, and we'll come back to this, but think about it this way. So the ledger was how much gold do we have? And then the wealth was a division, or the money was a division of that, okay? So now think about this, for example, on a publicly traded company, you, you invest money into my company. You own 5% of my business. But over time, I raise more money and you get diluted. You own less and less as a percentage of the company. That's mm -hmm. not good. You right. don't want that. But if, if now you own fiat currency, fiat currency is the ledger for the wealth. But every time they print money, you're being diluted. Right. You don't own a percentage of the ledger. Right. Every time your soup is getting watered down. Every time they print another dollar, you're being diluted in your ownership of the ledger. Correct. So now we have a new form of money. Now let's talk about money. So again, understand the history of money. If you go back to thousands of years of history, we've had lots of things that are- Did you read The Ascent of Money? Mm, I don't think I read You'd love that, that book. Okay. Yeah. So we have lots of things that are money because money just represents this, this thing. So we had the barter system, which um, is not very well, doesn't work very well, right? Um, the coincidence of once <laughs> uh, limits the ability for barterships. So then we had to come up with a medium exchange. Hey, uh, Garrett, you know, do you want my iPhone? No. Okay. Uh, would you trade me for this coffee cup? Now this becomes a medium exchange, right? So we've had feathers, rocks, seashells, gold, obviously all these medium exchange. And it's a, it's this evolutionary path. So it starts as a collectible. Oh, look how cool this rock is. Eventually it could, it could evolve to become a, um, a store of value where right now rich people store value in old cars. One of my buddies in art and yeah, art watches, jewelry, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And 
people instinctively realize that their life's battery is being drained. So they're trying to go into anything they can, like art, jewelry, et cetera. So then it's collectibles. Now, then you mentioned earlier the moneyness characteristics. If there's money characteristics, it could evolve to the next stage, which is a medium exchange. So that's portable, durable, divisible, recognizable, saleable, scarce. So gold is not very portable. Pretty, pretty hard to carry, you know, $100,000 of gold or a right. million dollars worth of gold. Um, so that that's number one. It is durable. So bananas would be a horrible form of money because they're not durable, right. right? A cow is a horrible form of money because it's not divisible. And even if it was divisible, it's not fungible. So money has to be fungible. So if it has those attributes, it can become a medium of exchange. And then eventually- Explain fungible. Fungible is one for one. Yeah. So if I get gold in Africa, gold in Mexico, and gold in the US, gold's gold. Yep. It's, 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 if I grow wheat in one of those, wheat's wheat, right? Um, but if I cut up a cow, I mean, I want a ribeye and you got the liver, like, yep. you know what I mean? So yep. it's not, it's not, yeah, fun, yeah. it's not yeah. fungible, right? Um, so it has to have all those, those, all of those attributes. And those are, I think the main ones. So it needs to be durable. Bananas are no good. It has to be divisible. So let's talk about divisible for a minute. Um, most people think that Bitcoin's too expensive. They can't afford it. And there's only 21 it's million. divisible. But it's divisible. And dude, the mental gymnastics, world recognized financial experts are going on Twitter and saying that Bitcoin's not scarce because it's divisible. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, dude, I'm talking like like Paul Krugman types are saying this. So if I we can solve world hunger with one pizza, if we can cut into enough pieces, like anyway, it makes no sense. But what happens is people say, I can't afford a Bitcoin. Well, can you afford a 400, can you afford a, an, a bar of gold, 400 ounces? No. Well, you can just buy one ounce. Well, I can't afford an ounce. Great. Buy a gram. I can't afford a gram. Right? And so gold is divisible. Now, if right now we have like the BRICS nations talking about going back to a gold standard. If one of these sovereigns said, hey, I'm not going to buy U.S. treasuries. I want 100 billion in gold. There's not enough gold for 100 billion. So gold would have to go up in go up value. Go value big time. Right? Yeah. Okay. So Bitcoin. You is, know the number it would go up to too. Yeah, so we just take all the dollars yeah. divided by all the gold. Yep. Um, and so Bitcoin is infinitely divisible. The value just has to go up of that. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So anyway, so Bitcoin has all these attributes to, to make this path. And it's, it's making this ascension. It's, nothing's guaranteed. There's no certainties in life. There's only probabilities. But it has all the right attributes. It's like we saw this tree in the forest. And I'm like, dude, Garrett, can you believe this tree is going to be as big as these one day? doesn't mean it will. It could die. But most likely it has the attributes. It, 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 it most likely will, right? Okay. So now we have this money that doesn't leak because it will never be more than 21 million. And we can own a piece of the ledger. So right now, Michael Saylor owns 1% of the Bitcoin ledger. That's a lot. The ETFs own 1% of the Bitcoin ledger. Yep. I can own 0.000001% of the ledger, whatever. But I'll never be diluted. And what happens is over enough period of time, the final stage of that mon monetary evolution is collectible, store of value, medium exchange. And the final one is the unit of account. Right now, most of the world, the unit of account measures everything in dollars. How much is this house? $2 million. How much is gas? $4.50. And so the dollar is the unit of account for us. And that's how we measure value. But the problem is, if we're trying to build a house and we don't have a tape measure, we have a bungee cord, how does that work out? So the value is changing all the time. This door is this big, this window is this big, nothing, we're, right? And so we don't have this standard unit of measure. And so the fiat money dying, we'll, we'll dig into all these rabbit holes if you want, I'll, I'll kind of finish this, this talk here. But um, everyone knows the, the fiat money is dying. And so they're rapidly getting into real estate and stocks. Part of the reason why stocks aren't coming down, real estate's not coming down. They don't want to go back to the currency. They want to be in assets. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's like, well, what asset holds my energy the best? Which, if they're just if they're stores of value, if they're batteries of energy, which battery gives me the best energy? And what I believe is that there's no certainty, but the probability is pretty high that maybe in 60 to 80 years from now it becomes the unit of account. And then we have all the wealth of the world divided by all the Bitcoin in the world. And the difference of this system versus gold or any other is that I can own a fixed supply of the ledger. And it will never be diluted, which means that my purchasing power goes up instead of down. And instead of having this closed system, there's an open ledger. Yeah, so that's a whole other piece. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. And it's important to understand this because... Yeah, and, if, and for those that are novice, like explain ledger. I mean, I know you kind of 
connected it the dots with some other pieces, but yeah. Well, the ledger is that you know gold was money, mm-hmm. but gold is very slow to transport. Right. So I'm in California, you're in Utah. For me to pay you in gold takes a long time. It's very expensive. There's risks <laughs> involved with that, right? And so what we would do is we'd both put our gold in the bank, and the bank would keep a ledger. And yep. I would just say, hey, bank, uh, just I paid Garrett, and they would just cross off some yep. money for me and they would add the ledger to you. Yep. The problem is that introduces, well, lots of problems. One, it introduces trust. Exactly. I have to trust the person with the ledger. One, did they really take off for me and give to Garrett? Did they take off too much? Two, will they transfer it when I want them to transfer it? Three, will they say they have more than they actually have? Well, the government has failed that multiple times. So the government created dollars off of the ledger of gold. The government was running the ledger and they printed way too many dollars. In 1933, they owed gold. This was the problem. So they owed gold. They didn't owe money. They owed gold because gold was money, but they had printed too many paper certificates. So they had no choice but to steal the people's gold. They don't say they stole it. They call it, they bought it back, but whatever you want to call it, forced, forced buyback. Um, then they printed too much dollars again. So in 1971, well, in in the 50s and 60s, the nations were like, hey, we see what you're doing here. We don't want these paper certificates. We want the gold back. France sent the warships to the U.S. to get the gold, and Richard Nixon said, close the window. So over and over and over, the person holding the ledger cannot be trusted. And look at just what we had. The And this is where the world, I think, really woke up to this. And, you know, the early adopters have the benefit. But, like, dude, if the trucker protest in Canada didn't wake you up. Right. People doing a legal operation, constitutionally protected, had their bank account seized for no reason. Even donating money to GoFundMe, you get your bank account seized. And everyone's like, wow, I guess the money in the bank is on a ledger that I don't control and they can seize it whenever I want. So that was a big wake up. But I think the ultimate wake up call, not just to the people, but to the entire world. Remember Cyprus? Yeah, Cyprus in 2015. That was like a bank bail in. But I think the bigger thing was was Russia's bank accounts got seized. So there's three superpowers in the world with nuclear weapons. There's more nations with nuclear, but three superpowers, China, Russia, and the U.S. One of three superpowers with nuclear weapons had their bank accounts seized, $650 billion. So if it can happen to Russia, what chance does any other nation have? Who is going to want to store their wealth in in a fiat currency that can just be taken when you don't control the ledger? So one, trust. It's a big deal. And actually... I think it's the biggest deal because the world cannot work without trust, period. And I'm sure you have a lot to say right, about people, that. People, people are, you know, upset if their battery dies on their phone faster than they thought. But I have and to- And now we're talking about I their- have to, I have to trust that the waiter didn't poison my food. Right. I have to trust that the cook cooked my chicken properly. I, like, I have to trust the guy driving on the opposite side of the road doesn't veer into my lane. Like the world can't operate without trust. That right. is the core. And the, and the piece of trust is that- Trust is very fragile. As I was taught, my dad taught me as a kid, it takes a whole lifetime to build that reputation and up and one time right. to destroy it. And it doesn't come back. If you were in a relationship with a business partner and he was embezzling from you or you have a wife that's cheating or whatever it may be, like to get that trust back, even if you forgive them, does it ever really come back? And so like, that's basically where we're at now. So how does the world move forward in, in a world without trust? That's one. Number two, the person who controls the ledger controls it. And so you have to have permission to use the ledger. So we have about 1.5 billion people in the world today that don't have access to the financial system. If you're a 13, 14 year old kid that just happened to be born in a sanctioned country, no financial system for you. You see, this right here is the great equalizer because I can learn anything, meet anyone, do anything. I can have an Instagram account. That's how we were talking before. People are making millions of dollars just off Instagram alone, but not if you can't join the financial system. Because why? You don't have permission. So now we have a permission system that's in borders. So in uh, El Salvador, the first nation to adopt Bitcoin, 30% of their GDP is remittances. When you live in third world countries, people go to America and send money back home, right? So now we have a bordered money. So now there's 30% is remittances, which have fees up to 20% of that. Just to transfer the money money because we're in a bordered, a closed system that requires permission, that requires trust, and it's- Did you see what happened to Joe Mercola? Do you know who he is? Of course. I know. I'm I'm good friends with Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was wild. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Chase Bank's like, we're freezing your accounts. Not just his- 
people that work for yeah, him yeah. and their family members. And their family members, yeah. And their family members. Over so, disagreeing on his view of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. He's, That's, he spoke at he spoke at both my conferences. He was named the number one spreader of disinformation by CNN. <laughs> by the place that just, it's, yeah. that it's mostly yeah. misinformation. So when I look at yeah. the problem, back to solutions coming to problems, we have a lot of problems. One, uh, runaway money printing. That's a problem. It's caused massive inflation, obesity. I mean, all these things we talk about. One, a money, infinite, infinite money printing. Two, permission. 1.5 billion people in the world today have no access to banking. They're, they don't have permission to join. Uh, and then the ones that do join even still um, have censorship. If you don't do what we say, we take your bank account. Three, it's bordered, so it can't be used anywhere. So we need solutions to those problems. So it's almost like we need something that has a fixed supply instead of unlimited inflation supply. It's almost like we need something that's borderless instead of border. It's almost like that we need something that's censorship <laughs> resistant instead of censored. It's almost like we need something that's permissionless, right? And so anyone right now, anywhere in the world can literally download a Bitcoin wallet and have Bitcoin transferred anybody right now. Now, Venmo, it works almost the same as Venmo, but with Venmo, I have to apply and they have to give me permission to join the network, right? So I can't just open up a Venmo account. They have to approve me. I have to upload my documentation. So how can you get Bitcoin without something like Coinbase? Value exchange. Just someone else's wallet. Imagine that. Yeah. Value exchange. Just go straight to the person that has Bitcoin. Uh, what, a, what a world. And yeah. this is why you have to understand Private. it from a yeah. philosophical level. Because what happens is when you don't understand things at a philosophical level, you you draw these roadblocks in your mind. Right. It's like people just giving them a, a thumb drive with Bitcoin. Yeah. So to how, escape how do I get country. it if they everyone requires KYC? Work for it. And this is where the government doesn't really understand this because they don't understand from this base level. But think about this. Right. Because yeah, so, the guy that introduced it to me got his first Bitcoin in a McDonald's parking lot, you right. know, giving money for the wallet. So, so they're telling the people that, um, you can't buy Bitcoin. You're, you're not allowed to transfer from your bank. You can't own it, whatever. Yeah, my friend and, got it. The, his bank dropped him because yeah. he bought Bitcoin but, but, but from think, his but account. Think about the millennials. The millennials are like, ha ha jokes on you. Cause I don't have any money in the bank. Right. I don't have anything that you can seize. I don't have anything that you can block me from. I'm just going to work and earn in Bitcoin. Yeah. My feeling about and, the bank is a month or less money in a bank just to do don't, transactions. Don't keep any more in the bank than you're willing to lose. Right. It's just like, what can I do transactions yeah. with that for yeah. payroll and stuff like that? But so, yeah. but so they're going to like block, they're going to, so they control the on and off ramps. Let me give you this, a true story. I've been going down to El Salvador quite a bit, doing some work down there. It's amazing what's going on down there. Like, Obviously, it's still a third world country, but the trajectory they're on is like changing the world, in my opinion. It's a very, very important situation going on in there. Um, they were the first one to create uh, or or say that Bitcoin is, is legal tender. So now you can use it as currency and it's not taxable and things like that. And so using an app called uh, Stackworks, um, you can do micro tasks, which is just like micro inputs, like training AI, for example, you're in like a penny at a time. Um, half the world lives on less than $5 a day, by the way. 75% of the world lives on less than 10. So what I did is I, I did a deal with this company, uh, Stackworks, and I got these smartphones and I took them down to El Salvador and I gave them these smartphones out for free and I taught them how to do these micro tasks and these jobs and they can earn the equivalent of about 4 or $5 an hour. Now, in order to do this, there was no, nothing, no registration. They don't even have to put an anonymous username. All they do is plug in their Bitcoin wallet and they start doing work and Bitcoin starts going into their wallet. So they earned it anonymous and then they can go spend it anywhere they want anonymous. And when I saw that happen, Garrett, I go, the government can't stop this. See, they control the on and off ramp, but we don't have to use the on and off ramp. We can just exchange value. They can't control that. We, and this is what the bankers, the head of the BIS, Augustine Carson says, the central banks have to come out with the central bank digital currency because nobody will trust money if it's not from a central bank. No, we, we say what money is. We take my phone, we take this <laughs> bottle, we take my labor. We say what money is. And, and uh, anyway, so that's what, there's, there's all these, when you don't, and the reason why we start there is because if you don't understand that, you can't understand Bitcoin. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.